I've been talking to them a little bit, uh, just seeing exactly what we want to do. And let's go ahead and welcome in one of our favorites here. Good old Trisden. Come join us, the egg of eggs. Trisden. Trisden. If you're here, you don't necessarily need to join quite yet, but I would love to come chat with you. Oh, hello there, Tristan. Hello. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I uh, I slept till noon, which is regrets, but that's okay. It's regrets. Oh, no. Well, you know, every once in a while you need a little bit more sleep, a little bit more relaxation. I can't necessarily blame you. Yeah, it was uh, it was restful. I I made the mistake of staying up until four a.m. watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which uh, may not have been the best idea. That sounds I like had a some mistake. weird dreams. It's Let's... a real good movie, though. By good, incredibly endearingly jank. Yeah, I. That's one that I've never seen, but I probably need to sometime. You know, I... Funny coincidence. Uh, I, I think that the game that you're giving out today is actually based off of some sort of show or movie or something. It might be a little bit. It, it's really hard to tell because it's... In the gameplay, it looks like an oil painting, but... Uh, oh, you baby. know, I, I felt... Yeah, I felt like a comic book cartoony style mood, uh, and I kind of went for one that we don't see very often here. True. True. Well, let me go ahead and reveal it. We've got a game that's called He-Man, or Masters of the Universe. I guess it's not He-Man. Masters of the Universe Interactive He-Man Power of Grayskull. Yes, uh, <laughs> this is a thing we have. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I am pretty dang excited about this. This is not going to be a good game at all. Uh, like, what's strange is that by the time this game came out, I'm not sure He-Man was even a thing that people watched anymore. Well, there was a, a very short reboot, I've been told, around 2000. It didn't do very well, but that's what this is based off of, I believe. Mm, okay. That's hopeful. Yeah, this is after the reboot. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So this is probably also one of the ugliest GBA games I've ever seen. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, it's not that ugly. It's He-Man. I don't know. It looks like He-Man was put on hot and he melted a little bit. Slightly, slightly melted. You know, everybody melts a little bit in their life. It's what happens. I mean, I know I do during the summer. Jeez. Yeah, it's... Oh, and in this room, because while doing streams, I'm just... You know, the door's closed, the computer just generates heat, and then by the end of it all, I'm just a mess. A mess of kusoge. That sounds kind of crappy. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, by the way, which of our players is going to be doing audio for us today? Oh, Cadus asked and we got an answer. Let me find it here. Archfile can do audio. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Ah, uh, so I, I'm thinking right now the game that we have... Uh, I know nothing about this game. How it's much of it have you good. played? Have you beaten it? I did not finish it. I played through about... Uh, according to what I've seen, I've played through about two-thirds of it. Okay. That's not too bad. What kind of game is it, actually? Like... I fully expect platformer here when it comes to He-Man. There's a little bit of jumping and platforming. Um, it's mostly a really bad short stage slash mission-based gauntlet. 
one. Okay. Like, you remember the GBA Gauntlet Dark Legacy? Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. It's basically that. Ugh, oh, this is gonna be ugly. Is the music at yep. least better? Mm, not really. No, oh, because that music was so bad. Like, abnormally bad. It hurt. It hurt so much. I'm not, I'm not ready for this, Trisden. It's not gonna be okay. It's gonna be a problem, yeah. Ah, uh, well, everybody, uh, we've got He-Man coming up. Uh, now the two players, Jackism and uh, Admin Argyle, this is round two for them uh, in the loser's bracket. Whoever loses today is eliminated from Cusa Grande. Sayonara, we do have prizes to give to the people who are out, but other than that, we're really starting to narrow the field and get down to basically the last little bit of the tournament here. It's exciting. Yeah, we're getting there. How many people are left, did you I don't say? Know. Some. Some people are left. <laughs> Some quantity. Yeah, there, there are people who are still in the tournament. Believe it or not, these are not robots that are just programmed to enjoy never-ending pain. You know, they, these are real human beings here. As far as I'm aware, they are. I'm not entirely sure myself. There's a couple of people I accuse of being Kusoge robots because they've beaten games that I thought was just not possible to beat in an hour. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I mean, that's basically the story of Kusagrande. You never know how somebody's going to do. And then suddenly, bam, they beat a game that you couldn't beat the first two stages. The Game Master's Dilemma, you, you just don't know how they're going to do. Yeah, there's a, there's a quote floating around somewhere where I said uh, during a race that someone got further than I'd ever been before, and Mike just yelled at me in this exasperated tone, they got past the first stage. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was a fun time. <laughs> well, I think we are just about ready to roll with this but first i need to do what i always forget to do which is to change the icons i remembered i remembered this is uh just as well because i need to go close my curtains because uh the moment we started streaming the uh sun poked out and is like blaring angrily through my window ah stupid sun well, you know what? It happens. Go, go tell the sun to go away. Everybody, uh, we uh, just have a couple minutes left of setup, so go ahead and grab some water, kick back, relax. We've got He-Man coming up right now. We should totally cancel the sun. I do not hear any audio on Adam and screen as well. Maybe. Cancel the sun? No. Oh, dot. Oh, what am I doing? I'm being dumb. I was being a moron. This music is actually pretty dang good. You said that it wasn't any better than Gauntlet. The title screen music is alright. It's kind of campy, I think. Um, the in-game music is just this weird, like, dirge sort of thing, droning kind of, you know, intense moment in the desert kind of music. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's campy, but this... He-Man's campy. That's what He-Man is.
All right, I'm checking with the players right now to see if they are ready to begin this match and get rolling. And it looks like Jakazam is, and so is Adam and Artvile. Everybody pull out all of your muscles. Uh, anything else to spam? Swords, uh, skulls, you got Skeletor in here somewhere. Oh my gosh, yes, skulls, muscles, and swords. I think that is probably a good combination. Spam, everybody, I'm doing the countdown right now. Best of luck to the players, and may uh, the best He-Man Master of the Universe win? As soon as I see movement in the first stage, I will start our timer. Oh, there's actually the key man. Oh boy. In like key man emotes. I love it. Valid. So this is a isometric-ish kind of free roaming mission based thing. The levels are pretty dang small. Like this level is probably only like three or four screens wide. Um, the main thing that makes this terrible is that enemies are damage sponges. Like it will take you forever to kill an enemy. Uh, after, like, the first couple of foes that you tutorialize on. Okay. Yeah, So it's... the main gimmick here... Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the main gimmick here is you have to close this portal and then rescue some member of your camp, and that's it. So it's going to be pretty short. Like I said, it's a tutorial level. Um, later on, levels get a little bigger, enemies get more spongy, bosses especially. So it's going to be a thing. This looks like a good game. Nah, I'm I'm lying. It looks like He Man. Uh, I love this weird wizard who just talks to you all the time. Hey, He Man. Yeah, so I don't know a lot about He Man. This is the first place where uh, both our racers are going to get stuck. With all this tutorializing, you kind of just shut your brain off and oh, yeah. follow what the um, the NPC is telling you to do. What you actually need to do, and he doesn't tell you, is you need to knock this tree down. Wait, really? Yeah, and they never tell you. <gasps> oh, by the way, jumping into the yellow is instant death. Are you serious? Oh, that's not good. Hey, Admin Darkvile has knocked the okay. tree down. Very nice. So, if you'd been watching, uh, there's no animation for the tree falling down. It's too, too good for this game. So... What it does instead is it does a jump cut, and when it comes back, the tree has just fallen over and forms a bridge. That's so bad. It is. Like, you don't need a full screen transition for the tree falling down, right? Well, that's what they do. They don't need to. So these floating Doombot things are really damage spongy. Uh, what you really need to do is charge up an attack, which you do by holding down the attack button, okay. and you'll one or two shot them then, but uh, we'll see if the racers figure out how to do that. I was able to figure out all the mechanics with no instructions, so I decided not to give them any instructions, kind of channeling my Maikuyama here. Aha! I love it. We're in the middle of brackets. They can figure it out. I'm looking, by the way, uh, at the company that made this, Tonico LLC. They only made two other games, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machine, which is also sort of an isometric Game Boy Advance thing. And then they also did a version of Retro Atari Classics for the Nintendo DS. And I assume that that was okay. You know, it's just old school Atari games. Uh, so there's really no way to mess that up. So, yeah, this is their possibly best game. That's horrifying. Yeah. But, hey, you know what? One of the programs for this game is also uh, currently working on the various Call of Duty games. Recently, the engineer for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Four, 3? 4? It's got four eyes here. I assume it's supposed to be three, but yeah. One of the senior engineers, I believe, helping with that. Yeah, this looks like Call of Duty. I don't think this looks like Call of Duty. So, Whatever. Um, Whatever. Adamant has finished the level. All they need to do now is run back to the entrance and leave. You have to go all the way back to the entrance? For this one, yes. Okay. 
I think Adamant Arcvile is through. Very nice, He-Man. So I inform the racers that once you get to a specific level, you can continue from there freely. You can even go back to the main menu as long as you don't reset. And you can just come back because you get a mission select. Uh, I left it up to them if they want to take down passwords or not as like soft lock insurance. Because I was in a race in Cusa Grande 3 where we had infinite continues, so I didn't write down passwords, and oh, then yeah. I soft locked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jokazam got every collectible in that level, which means they get a bonus stage. This is probably just a waste of time, to be perfectly honest. I found some weird crossover between this company and Infogrames, because... One of the people who worked on the business end of Jack in the Dark, which was uh, basically shipped with Alone in the Dark, he did the design. He helped with the design for this game. And also Is did this? design for the other Alone in the Dark games. I love it. I, I question if this game has design, really. I mean, I gotta be honest, it's got something. So here, here's the deal. We're past the tutorial. We're on to the, like, the first real level of the game. Uh, what are we going to be seeing here? What really is going to be challenging? So we're going to actually have a boss fight in this level. Um, and the boss fight is incredibly damage spongy like everything else is. And the best way to handle it really is to just dance on the staircase leading up to the uh, boss because he won't chase you down the staircase charge up an attack walk up the stairs hit him once and come back down if you try to do a flat-footed one-on-one -on -one man fight with the boss uh, he will win <laughs> uh -oh. he okay that's good to attacks know. faster than you uh and hitting taking damage cancels your charge so i don't like that yeah, so um, Jokazam is getting there. Um, Arcvile is actually on the boss. And I expect to see both racers die here. Yeah, especially with that block that the boss has. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Uh, Arcvile just got whacked for like a third of their health. Yep, goodbye. Holy guacamole. Yeah, this is going to be a problem for a hot minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, one of the people who... Like, the person who did the music for this game has done music for so many games. It's Alistair Brimble, uh, if, if you're familiar with that name. Like, most of these games are not exactly standout games, but hey, you know, they're... You know, the Asterix and Obelisk games. We've got some XCOM music in here. Uh, I, I see various Spider-Man games. The Lion King, uh, specifically, I don't know which version. One of the versions. Uh, Treasure Island Dizzy was their first soundtrack for the So Amiga. Arcvile just got wrecked, but you can continue from the same level. That, that's really nice that you can continue. Uh, how many lives do you have, by the way? Is it right next to the health meter at the top left? Uh, yes, and it also looks like Jokazam may have figured out a strategy. This is not going too bad. Unfortunately, you can't really see the boss's health. Or can you, yeah, you when can. you hit it? Yeah. yeah. It's a circle gauge that appears over the boss when you hit it. Yeah, Adamant Artvile had been in the lead, but now that Jack is figuring out a way to actually hurt this boss, that's going to be super helpful. Unfortunately, there we go, game over. Yeah, I expected this to be the first barrier, and it's only the first real level. Oh no, this person who did the music for this did music for the Lawnmower Man. Terminator 2, Big Nose Freaks Out. Uh, yeah. This That's is amazing. quite the pedigree. Like, there's some good games on this list, but there's a lot of crap. How about, like, 
Flintstones, Burger Time, and Bedrock, you know? Everybody loved that game. Or Mr. Nuts. At least Nuts. it's not the Master System version. Wait, there's a Master System version? Of Flintstones? Yeah, I made people play it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I thought, I thought you were talking about the burger one, but yeah. Uh, this is an amazing list, and they're still doing music and audio. Their last game was Ice Age Scrat's Nutty Adventure. So, Arkvile may not be aware of the fact that you can charge attack. I don't think I've seen them do it yet. That's going to be a major disadvantage. Oh, yeah. Again, I gave neither one of them instructions, uh, so that... Jokazam discovered it is fully on them and should be capped as an advantage, so I'm not going to tell them. Oh, jeez. That's so nice. Yeah, honestly, uh, uh, you know, figuring out the mechanics and figuring out the best way to take down the boss, uh, it's, I don't know, it's a really important part of Cusa Grande, just figuring out everything that you can do early on. Now, yeah, so there's a long play of this that I, I watched to fill in the rest of the game that I myself didn't play because I'm a terrible GM. <laughs> uh, and what the long play does is just stands down the staircase to the left, charges up an attack, walks into the arena and hits the boss, and then runs back down the staircase to charge again. And it gets the boss stuck in, in this um, loop of walking back and forth trying to reach you. And it makes the boss real easy. And I suspect um, one of our racers is going to discover that sooner or later, but it may not be right now. Yeah, they'll they'll figure this boss out sometime. Are you actually able to block? Yes, you can block with R. And it looks like that actually helps pretty significantly, but uh, unfortunately the boss doesn't really have very many warm-up frames for you to see uh, that they're getting ready to attack. Despite not knowing you can charge attack, Arkvile seems to have a pretty solid strat here. It's the strat that Jokazam has also picked up using. Yeah. So this is really slow, but it's consistent and it's safe. Well, never mind. I shouldn't talk, apparently. <laughs> You know what? Commentator's Curse is a myth. It's a lie. It wasn't just one racer who died to that, too. The moment I said it was a safe strat, they both went down. It's fine. Don't blame yourself, Tristan. Just blame me, man. I didn't know I had that kind of power, but now that I know I do, I'm going to use it all the time. <laughs> I love it. That That's beautiful. So... Yeah, from what I'm seeing, essentially, uh, with this game, what you're trying to do is get through these levels, which are essentially beat em up levels, until you get to the boss, kill the boss, get through, uh, and eventually you'll end up fighting Skeletor at the end of the game, which, obviously, Pretty if it's much. a He-Man game, you have to fight Skeletor. Yeah, so jacques moves on to the bonus level after level two. Uh, bonus levels aren't really helpful. They appear when you get all of the collectibles in a normal stage and you get an opportunity for an extra life, which I guess could be useful if you want to um, have some insurance against having to start a level over, but a racer should have infinite continues. Now, level three is a different mechanic. This is a uh, infinite runner. Like, well, not infinite. It's an auto-scrolling runner shoot 'em up kind of thing in isometric. Two and a half D. Oh, fun. So it's like Paperboy. Kind of. I'm sorry, that's all I could think about. Or like the horse sections of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure for the NES. Sorry, I, I'm just thinking none of them are okay. Okay, Zaxxon. There we go. That's a better example. Yeah, I actually don't know anything about He-Man canon. I apologize. I, It's just never something I really got a ton into. So I'm going to call things weird things like that dopey wizard dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no idea as well. So go ahead and call it whatever you want. 
Uh, Jackson is on, as far as I can tell, like a bitrate killer level. It's a cat cannon. Cat cannon. Yeah, our, our experts in chat are saying that's the battle cat Zaxxon, which, okay. Or, oh, I, I was thinking Zaxxon is an isometric uh, auto-scroller game. Oh, it is an isometric. Yeah, it yes. is. You're right. Just battle cat. Okay. Battle cat. Valid. I played a lot of Zaxxon when I was a kid. Good Note, game. I also didn't get past the second level as a kid. I was really bad at Saxon. Yeah, I got you now, Lupine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Arcfile is very slowly plinking this boss down. Uh, about to lose a life, but has two more behind it. So, this is probably going to be a completion of the level. But level three is an auto scroller, and Jokazam is almost done with it. So. <laughs> There's some catching up to do, but it's early in the race yet. Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about Admin Archvile. Simply put, levels are going to get a little bit harder as time goes on. I don't imagine... Uh, we'll see Jack of them just rush through these levels. We'll probably see a wall fairly soon. Yeah, it, most of these levels follow the same pattern of there just being a really spongy fight you have to deal with and learn the pattern. I also want to point out this spider it just looks like, you know, if you've ever played a 16-bit um, a color game on a 32-bit operating system and the colors go all like rainbow weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, I sort of recall that. Oh, geez, bitrate killers on both screens. It's because of the ground. The ground, it yeah. looks like static. And so if you move, it just destroys everything. Yep. Um, H264 and, well, X264 is not designed to encode and compress uh, static, basically. So uh, get used to this. <laughs> Oh, baby. I'm glad to see both of the players are making some pretty good progress, though. Admin Archvile onto the level before Jakazam, and because it's an auto-scroller, I don't think it's going to be too complicated, you know. He'll be able to get through and start catching up. Yeah. It's... This is a pretty polite auto-scroller. There's not really a whole lot in the way of enemies and they all take one hit and the main barrier is jumping over things you gotta jump over obstacles and that's about it yeah don't run into the pallets don't run into uh spiders don't run into trees don't run into the whatever that wheelie thing is i don't even know what it is I'm pretty sure this is an incredibly stock laser sound, too. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, Jakazam, I think, is just taking things a little bit slow, trying to make sure not to take too much damage when fighting these enemies, and it, that's probably a good idea. She's making steady, slow but steady progress. Yeah, so this is the boss-like object of the level, and it, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a thing. Apparently it just does a 6-7-20 every time you hit it. So we haven't really talked too much about the controls. How, how does the game control? Like... So the main thing about the controls is uh, L is a run button. Okay. Uh, if you hold L down, you move around at turbo speed far faster than you can see stuff coming and deal with it. If you don't hold L down, you move at a snail's pace. There's no real happy medium there as Jokazam completes level four. Nice. Uh, aside from that, 
your your attacks do practically nothing, but they come out really quick. Um, okay. So the controls themselves are okay. What you really need to do is charge up attacks, though, and charge up attacks take forever. And if you take any damage at all, you lose your charge. Uh, that's the main problem. The secondary problem is jumping. You know, you have this isometric thing where you can't really tell where you are, and you have mandatory platforming in uh, certain places. And if you fall, you instantly die. And that will become more and more of a problem as we go. Yeah, that's not good. I, uh, like, isometric platforming is always bad. I, I don't think I've ever played an isometric platformer that made it bearable. It's just pain. Yeah. Um, also, I would say the... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I would say the biggest problem with the controls is um, when you attack, it's really hard to tell if you need to, for example, swing down or down left in an enemy because of the way the eight-way directional controls work. Yeah. Uh, that's really the only real problem with um, controls in combat. I mean, that that sort of makes sense. Uh, if... I don't know. any Anything, especially NES, Super Nintendo... Uh, Game Boy Advance that had multiple levels, like e even if it was a side-scrolling beat-em-up and you had to move up and down a little bit on the screen, uh, it was always difficult to line yourself up just right in order to deal damage. And uh, yeah, this appears to be a bit of a nightmare for that. Yeah, and you can see some of the one-tile platforms in the water level that Arc File is in. You can actually stand on those. Later on, it becomes mandatory to land on those. Oh, no. Why does He-Man die to water? I mean, look at him. You, you think he takes regular baths? Is the smell what gives him power? Like, I, I don't know much about He-Man. Maybe. <laughs> Just the, the stench. Uh-oh. Admit, His muscles are too heavy. I like that one. A little bit. Heavy muscles. Oh yeah, they're they're so dense he just sinks to the very bottom. Ow. Okay, let's let's try to get Argvile going again. There we go. Yeah, this is utterly destroying Argvile's bit rate, and I love it. Watch out, he man. Uh oh. Wait, you have to fight Beast Man? What yeah, a, Beast Man's right up here. What a good name. He Man versus Beast Man. So if you just try to stand in front of Beast Man, he'll just decide to keep hitting you, and each one of these hits takes about a sixth of your health. So you gotta do the the forward and back thing, like uh, with the prior boss. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this we is are... going to take a while. Yeah, Beastman is not exactly chump change here. It takes a little bit. Like you said, everything's a damage sponge. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jogazam here used the strategy of, like I said, going forward and back and forward and back and forward and back and... Wait, no. Wrong thing. Going back and forth and charging between swings. Um... Arcvile is just blocking and then countering with a poke when Beastman gets tired. Uh -huh. Beastman just... Yeah, this definitely is going to take a while. Oh my gosh. Beastman, just die. There we go. I like how you shake while blocking. Like, oh no! Oh, oh, oh. Beast man, don't do this to me. I'm pretty sure if you just stood there holding your sword out like that as a weapon block, an opponent would just swing around it. But what do I know about combat? Depends. Beast man might be really dumb. Well, he hasn't changed his strategy in 80% of his health. Uh, I'm going to go with, yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. Let, let me see if there's any information about him. 
Okay, so uh, Jokazam just died to poison because, P.S., there's poison damage in this game. Oh no! Oh jeez, he's so ugly. I don't like Beast Man. Okay, he was one of the first seven characters to be created for the Masters of the Universe toy line. Uh, let's see. Got released with He-Man, Man, Man at Arms, and Skeletor. Those three. Uh, let me see if he has any personality. I don't know. Probably just dummy. Oh, he does have the power to control animals, though, which I'm glad he's doing that in this battle. Oh, wait. No. Jagazam has finished uh, what I believe was level 5 and is now onto the bonus stage again. I, I don't know if all these extra lives are actually how helpful they are, because they do mean that Jagazam doesn't have to restart levels because uh, she keeps getting... Uh, lives, but again, they're infinite continues, so it's 50-50. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, like, Jakuzam has been doing a really good push at this point, uh, getting through a, sort of this maze level, but this doesn't appear to be extremely enjoyable, this stage. Like, where do you even go? What are you supposed to do? Is, is, is it pretty simple that you just take care of the enemies right before uh, you uh, go through a door here? Or is, is it a maze? It's... I wouldn't call it a maze because that would imply it's more complicated than it is. But it is non-linear and it's not well signaled what you're supposed to do. Ah. Uh, but usually you just kind of explore the level until you find a barrier of some kind, like a door. Uh, and then your mission at that point is to figure out how to open that. And okay. in that way, it's kind of linear and signposted, but it's not great. I do not like the, the platforming here. This is bad. This is so incredibly bad. Uh, so here is the first example of a timed key in which you open a door oh no. and you have to get through that door before it closes again and it's through a platforming puzzle. Why? It's so evil! Yeah, just for everybody who's coming in and watching uh, with this match, Jakazam is currently in the lead, I believe, by one level. Adamant Artvile is making a pretty good push to start catching up, though. The goal is within one hour to see who makes the most progress through the game. Uh, at that point, the match is over, and whoever made it to the furthest point, even if they got game over and had to go back to the beginning of the game, Whoever got to the furthest point at any given time is the victor. So Chakazam definitely has a pretty good push. And the, the lucky thing about this game, I think, is the infinite continues as well as the password system. That makes solid progress pretty tangible for the players. Chakazam got through the time door. Oh, nice. It wasn't easy, because as soon as you open the door, the platforms that you use to get to the switch spawn fire traps and enemies on them. Yeah, shut up, you stupid bird creature. I don't even know what these things are. They're just... I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a look... Because here's the deal. Beastman is ugly. Is there any character who's awesome besides Skeletor? Uh, I mean, the... it's mostly just Skeletor. Yeah, I mean, there's Orko, who is the sort of mage character you see showing up, giving advice. Uh, let's see. He was created by Filmation to provide comedic relief in the He-Man series. He's funny? He looks so Jakazam almost made the second time door, but got stopped by Fart Wall. No, Fart Wall. 
Yeah, fart wall. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, the first time you defeat spawned enemies by a, um, by a switch, they don't spawn again when you hit the switch a second time. Okay, let's see. Let's see. And Jokasam's under the boss. Nice. Let's see. What's the strategy with this boss? Or is it pretty much the same strategy for all of them? So, Trapjaw here actually has a ranged attack, first oh, no. of all. So, that changes things a little bit. You can't just um, dance. Uh, Jokasam's actually found an interesting strategy here in doing the forward and back. But instead of forward and back, hiding behind a pillar. Uh, if you can keep the boss positioned properly, that could work. But I ended up just running in circles around it, to be perfectly honest. Okay. Jokasm's just straight up fighting him. That's valid. Interesting. Like, if you have enough lives to do this, this might be a good strategy. And actually, it looks no, like she has gotten a stomach. Yeah. I, like I it. that did not work. Uh, when I tried to do that, he just shot me. Really? Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's okay. One life left, and the boss goes down. That's all you need. Jack is on extending the lead at this point. Admin Arkvile has uh, basically a level and a half or so to go to, uh, to catch I just up. Point at this out. Point. The password for level 7 is thank you, He-Man, with all the valves removed. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. Okay, so we're back to the bitrate destroying auto-scroller here at level 7. Also, I hope you like eye-searing orange. My favorite color. The ones that make it so that I can't see color anymore. I want you to know there is a character in He-Man called Snout Spout. Uh, it's essentially a muscly man with a robotic elephant head. Good. This is hideous. I think I, I don't think I've ever seen anything this hideous from the cartoon. I'm a fan of. Uh, this one character in the Herculoids, which is ancient at this point, is just like a rhino that can fire lava balls out of its horn. <laughs> it's like, who came up with this? That sounds practical. It's incredibly practical. Wow, this, this level is hurting my eyes, and usually I can put up with crap like this. <laughs> It's pretty ugly, I'm not gonna lie. I, the thing is, Juxum is opted to go through this with only one life left. I think for the auto-scroller that's fine. But I, as soon as I got to a platforming level, I would probably die, get a game over to get all of my lives back. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. How can I get into the next level and get some solid progress? a valid approach. For an auto-scroller, you can't just backflip into a pit to do that, though, so maybe it's worth trying, regardless of your life count. True. Oh, how about this? There's a character in He-Man named Buzz-Off, who is basically Good. a bee with really muscly arms and legs. Okay, it's almost like Trogdor, you know, how they just put muscly arm on the dragon. So ah, you, you Jack Zom did about it. The, yeah, the strategy of taking a deliberate game over, and Jack Zom just did exactly that. See, I sometimes have good ideas, Tristan. So this is mission eight, which is pretty impressive, actually. Meanwhile, I believe Arcvile is still on five or six. Uh... Yeah, he's starting to fall a little bit behind. I 
I mean, we still have 25 minutes and there could be a wall coming up. I absolutely wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Like, But at the same time, thinking about GBA games, a lot of them tended to err on the side of being easier than harder. I'm just wondering if that is the case with this game. Uh... You know, every once in a while you'll run into something that's a little bit difficult, but I'm not... Okay, this... Sorry, I got distracted because there is a squeaky noise on Adamant Art Files side, and it sounds like rubbing rubber, and that gives me a headache, like, right away, and I am very angry at this point. Because as soon as I hear that sound effect, I just get angry. Anger is one possible reaction to that kind of sound, I guess. Uh, yeah, so there are 13 levels. Uh, it is entirely possible we'll see a completion, but it's it's going to be pretty tight if, uh, if that's the case. Yeah, I'm... Just a second, I'm taking my headphones off. I can't stand this sound. Ugh. That, you know, it's... <laughs> okay, it's done. Back. So, does that mean you're not a Bersintia fan? Look, I'm a fan. It's just that anything that sounds like rubber give insta headache, okay? And I don't I don't know. I I can't explain why. It's just how it is. That's valid. I um I have a couple of sounds that do that to me too. Okay, Almatia has bailed you out. Technically, you didn't mute the stream. You just stopped listening to it. True that. I'm not, I'm not going to be the loser who mutes the stream. Y'all. Okay, Adamant Arcvile is through. I'm moving on to the next level. How many levels are there? There are 13. Uh-huh. Yep. And at this point, uh, Jakazam is on 8, and Arkvile is on 6. In theory, we could possibly see the last level. I'm not sure if we're going to, but... Like, if, if all of the stages are about the same length, there's a possibility. Yeah, so the best way I can put the length and difficulty of this game into a, a statement or a, a critique is that this is the kind of length and difficulty of game where you would expect to not have infinite continues. Yeah. But you have infinite continues, so shrug. Well, that that's something that really happened with... I think Game Boy Advance is where that really started because pretty much every game had a save feature and a password feature. Like, they, they just... I think realized that people didn't really care about the challenge of having to play through the game over and over and over again, uh, and sort of realized that that sort of was artificially extending the length of the game. Uh, so, yeah. you know, around this time, even if the games are relatively easy, they're going to give you ways to continue where you left off instead of adding the frustration features. I do love that if you manage to die in the middle of a jump, you just fall over dead in midair and float there. It's good. That's how it really works if you die in midair. Not very many people die in the middle of jumping, though, okay? It doesn't happen all the time. Happens more to He-Man than to real man. So Adamant Arcvile is um, experiencing the time doors. We'll see how well they do on that. <laughs> and the sound effect. <laughs> yeah, so somehow Jagasam's not getting hit by this boss. Oh, there we go. I, again, commentator's curse. That looks like another stun lock situation. Oh my gosh, why do these crappy bird enemies take so many hits? 
Like, I'm sorry, He-Man actually has some muscles and a good sword. So, you should just be able to kill these stupid bird things in one hit. Stupid birds. Yeah, if you're doing a blind race and you get no instructions, you have to try everything. You have to try holding buttons, you have to try doing multiple button presses at once. You gotta try everything Agreed. Uh, in the first couple of minutes. Yeah, and the thing is, the, the dangerous thing is that once people find something that works, a lot of the times they just assume that's how it's supposed to be. And that assumption sometimes is incorrect, and I, I think Adamant Arvile is falling behind due to not really doing any of the charging. Yeah, definitely. That's That's been a major... I don't even know if I can say that's a major contributor anymore, because Jokazam started taking boss fights by just going berserk on them. But that is a uh, utility that Jokazam has that Arcfile does not have, and it's, it is a difference. I think for casual enemies, you can probably get through them a lot faster with some of the uh, charge attacks. In addition, yeah. if you can just run around for a while and hold on to the charge, you know, as soon as you run into an enemy, bam, charge attack, then do smaller attacks until they die. You know? Yeah, that's exactly what Jokazam is doing. You can actually see the charge meter in the top left around the health gauge. Yes. And you can just see uh, running around with the charge held. It's just like Mega Man. This is the Mega Man of He-Man games. Just run around, charge it up. You miss a you miss a platform and you die instantly, falling into a pit. You know. Well, I mean, if you fell in lava, you <laughs> you'd be done instantly too. Oh come on! You wouldn't instantly sink into lava. It's really dense. As long as you like really really tried to get off of it ASAP you know your shoes are gonna melt you might have some burning on your feet but you might survive no you die from the heat put off by the lava before you even touch the lava I mean that depends I mean, it depends on how much lava is there, to be honest. And how well ventilated the area is. This place looks pretty ventilated. I mean, look, it's a wide open area, you know. It's not just going to get all stuffy there. I can't believe this is a discussion we're having. It's important, Tristan. And look, bottomless pit, you know some of that that definitely is a lot of air that's not being heated up right now. So how much about fluid dynamics did you learn from Dwarf Fortress? Uh that's all I know, man. This explains a lot, actually. That's where I learned everything. Yo. And lava is barely a fluid. It's very viscous. All right, Arcvile is on this boss and has chosen to just go in like Jokazam did um, with an extra life in reserve that's quite very fine. nice. Already through the boss, moving on to the next mission. Yeah, both of the players are making a significant amount of progress. Jokazam is definitely in the lead at this point. I think at least two levels ahead. Yeah, and then Arcvile is on the um, orange soda level. Yum. Oh my gosh, I used to love orange soda. But I don't really drink much soda anymore, except, like, unless it's sugar-free.
but now I want some. And it's all because of He-Man. He-Man loves orange soda. I I don't think He-Man actually loves orange soda. Well, he would if it was invented back when he was around. So, Jaxxon is on a boss that seems to shoot pickles at you. Not the pickle boss. He-Man versus pickles. Who will win? I'm pretty sure those are supposed to be like sonic waves, but it's really hard to tell with this bit rate. It's pickles. That's Triclops. I do believe that's Triclops, yes. Does it mean he tries? Not hard enough, because he's about to go down. What a nerd. Shooting pickles. Then dying. Jogazom is just destroying the uh, boss fights. I mean, Arcvile is making a really solid showing, too. Don't get me wrong. This, where Arcvile is now is about where I stopped after um, an hour or so. So they both would have beaten me. I mean, mind you, we are in the bracket at this point, you know? It's not too surprising to see uh, two strong players making a significant amount of progress through here. It's just, Jakazam is somehow... I don't know. This is, this is the game made for her. It seems that way. Also, if you thought the bitrate was bad before, now both of our racers are on isometric auto-scrollers. Wow. Apologies to everybody who's watching right now. You can go ahead and wash your eyes out after the match. Yeah, there is a possibility we will see a completion. Uh, Arcvile is on to level 8, which is a real solid showing too, and there's still a possibility of catching up. It really we depends are on what's on the final the levels. Yeah. Yeah, if there's going to be a move, it's got to be soon. I like that these spiders are more inconvenient than scary. Just get in your way. You're like, move it, spider. Stupid spider. Hogging all the pathway. Now, this sound effect bothers me more than the uh, bird people sound effect does. Oh, the, per the bird people were fine. It was the doors. The doors that you had to destroy. That wrecked me. But the gross... Like, uh, the door again. No. Hate this. So the gross sort of like liquidy sound bothers you? Yeah. I can understand that. Like, I don't listen to that and think, wow, let me go ahead and play this on repeat for 10 minutes. You know? I'm like, yeah, I, I can do without. Without the gross lick sounds. Finish line for Jakazan. Very nice. All right, yeah, Jakazan's on the level 12. Uh, again, there are only 13 levels in this game, so it's going to be real close to completion. Oh, yeah. I honestly don't know are these final levels long or you, you didn't get to these levels right i pretty much called it good about two-thirds of the way through around level eight and then watched a video for the rest of it uh these are pretty much the same length if the uh video i watched was any indication i'm not too surprised it's game boy advance uh and uh, they tended to not have as much of a difficulty ramp up towards the end of games as uh, some of the others out there, especially if it was uh, shovelware, which is what we've got right here. I'm not a fan of Sophie. I don't know who or what Sophie is. <laughs> here, I'll say it. Sophie's dumb. Stupid Sophie. Nobody likes you, Sophie.
I also don't know who Sophie is, but I'm willing to insult somebody I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm... What, what's strange is that while watching this, this seems like almost one of the more playable isometric games. Oh, I did not ask a question that is really important. When you push up, do you move straight up? Yes, you. there's no like shifted uh, isometric diagonal weirdness here. When you press up, you move up. Why did that orb just groan? Okay, listen to this, everybody. Listen to this. Orb time. Listen to the orb groan. The groan may have been He-Man uh, at the same time. I, I don't think so. I, it's weird. <laughs> because it happened twice in a row. No, He-Man. I... Uh, so I believe uh, Archivile just fell into like a one pixel gap between two platforms and died. Yeah, it was a very small gap. I don't know. Kill planes are definitely in this game. Oh, yeah, that sound it. effect. Yeah. Yeah, that was the other enemy, I think. I... I mean, it probably is, but I, I, I imagine it's just they programmed this groan into the orb. They're like, somebody destroys our orbs. We got to make them feel bad about it. So we have about eight and a half minutes left, and Junkazam's about to wrap up level 12. Ooh. I love the sound effect from the orb. Yeah, it's more or less like that. It sounds like a sheep bleeding. It may be the orb. I don't know. It does. I swear it's the orb. I have literally no way to know. Oh my gosh, blind jumps in this? Yeah, a little bit. Why? How is this okay? Oh no, and then it's Beast Man again? Yeah, this is a boss rush level. Is this still level 12? Yes. I don't know, if someone wants to look up if there's a speed run of this, I'd be curious too. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently level 13 is Skeletor. Oh my so gosh, just we might be... see Skeletor, everybody. We might. Just to be clear, uh, yeah, Jokazam is destroying the game. Um, Adam and Arcvile is going about as fast as I did in a blind playthrough of this, and I'm not terrible at blind races myself. It's a real solid showing. But Jokazam's on the final stage. Very nice. Record is 22 minutes. All right. Not too bad, especially considering that, you know, the first playthrough. It's Skeletor. An hour, hour and a half. You can probably get through the game and then start learning. Yeah, that it's is It's a very low-res Skeletor. Res Skeletor. I want... Here, I'm, I'm going to do something real quick just to see if Jakuzam is doing a microphone. I, I want to hear if we can hear Skeletor. I'm sneaking. This may be a, a victory here. Indeed. In fact, 
There was like no Skeletor music or noise. That was sad. Archpile's on to mission nine, uh, which is about three quarters of the way through the game. Not bad for 54 minutes. Game over, but not a huge deal. Honestly, getting a Skeletor game over that- Skeletor goes down. What? Cast you, He-Man. Cast you, He-Man. Yeah. And I believe that's it. Wow. 5, 54, 43, just about. That is time. I think we can go ahead and call it unless Adam and Archvile wants to keep continuing through it. It looks Hi. like he is still going. So I'm gonna, let's see how far Edmund Archvile is gonna be able to get in the hour. Yeah, Jakuzum is definitely done. Congratulations for destroying this game. This was pretty dang impressive. Uh, yeah, we, we don't see too many game clears. See, Tristan, that, that's kind of the issue with uh, GBA, that some of these games, you know, you pay a lot of money and then you get about an hour worth of enjoyment. Yeah, um, it's a very short game. I really like it when I get a, when I manage to pick a game that gets a 55 plus minute completion though. Oh yeah. Like right at the buzzer. Yeah, those are the best matches. I think it's great. So it looks like um, uh, Jagazam has not said anything in chat that they've finished and um, we haven't called time. And uh, maybe Jakuzam is just looping to, because she believes she has to, but no, she's taking the victory at this point. Maybe just curious about what you can do to do this quickly. I wonder if the tutorial at the beginning teaches you how to do the power attack. Um, I want to say no. Really? I don't recall being taught it. I I just, as a habit, hold down attack buttons early in blind games, though. Because so many games do something different if you hold it down. Oh, yeah. You've got to try. Also, considering that it's just out of habit that I'll, I'll hold B down, you know? I've played too much Mario. I'm just almost always going to hold B whether or not it does anything. Yeah, same here. Uh, score 420 for... Jackazum. Nice. Yeah. Okay, this music isn't bad on Arcvile's uh, side. It's like some 90s techno garbage, but it's not bad. It's a little scary. It's not too bad. It's okay. Hey, Adam and Archivile through another level, moving on to the next one, Triclops. Yep, level the, 10. The Pickle Man. Oh no! Don't fall in lava, that hurts people. And hurts He-Mans. Yeah, I'm very much in agreement with the uh, residual deviance. Um, Archvile played really well, just oh, yeah. for some reason Jokazam just destroyed this game. Yeah, I, I think... I'm not sure Jokazam had an accidental game over in this. Like, maybe one, yeah, but... Yeah, both racers game over to the first boss while they were learning how to do boss things. That's essentially it, though. Yeah, um, Jokazam did better than the long play that I watched, because the long play I watched took 65 minutes. Was it actually a completion? Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah, if, if Art Vile had learned how to charge the sword, we might say... Uh, like, the, the match could have turned out completely different. But I think that is the one deciding factor, not figuring out all of the available controls. 
and that's something. Is Jogazam going to start speed running the game? I hope so. That's I'll a ask. game over for Adamant Arcvile. I'm going to say there's no way to ch to catch up to where he was. That is going to be time. I'm calling it right now. We're done. Oh my gosh, Trisden. This has been a fun match, but now it's over. That was an experience. Um, this is something that's been in a couple of GM's arsenals, and we've hesitated to use it because we were worried it would be kind of samey. But the performance uh, both racers put on really made an exciting race. Yeah, I, I think so. Like, I'm just amazed that Jakuzam was able to just keep holding on to it and keep making progress. Hello there, Hediment Art File. Hang on. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, oh, thank God I lost. Oh, no. <laughs> You're like, yay, yeah, no more games. Yeah, I'm, this is where I stop, unfortunately. So, yeah, congratulations, Jack. How do you say it? Jackazam? I always say Jackazam. Uh, right, yeah, she did really well. Like, honestly, we're shocked that she was able to get through and complete the game. Like, yeah. you were starting to get close, though. Mm -hmm. I think I was on, like, the last, what, 10th level? 11th, maybe? Yeah, you were on uh, 10. There's 13. There's something we have to ask you, though. Uh, were you aware that there was a charge attack? Did it do any more damage, or...? It one-shot most enemies. So, yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> well, okay. Hell with this game. Aw, teardrops. You know what? It's okay. He-Man will always be there for you, okay? He's he's cheering you on, Admin Arcvile. <laughs> yeah, not no more, he ain't. Oh, no! Yeah, we could have been watching Masters of the Universe. I, I mean, love that film. It's I've never terrible, seen it. Terrible, but it's a great film. I've never seen it. Oh, you'd love it. It's, uh, it depends on how much you love crappy B-movies. Uh, a lot? That I you'd mean... love this, definitely, because this, this was one of Canon Films' last films. Like, I think this was right before Over the Top, but right after Superman 4. Superman 4. Yeah, I haven't seen Superman 4. Like, I, I remember Superman 2, uh, Dreams Come True. That was a good one. Yeah. Superman 1 and 2 are good. Superman 3, uh, Superman 4 is where you can tell, oh, they just gave this to someone with no budget. Oh, that sounds exciting. Well, okay, oh, yeah. I'll have to check out that movie sometime. So, honestly, you know, as we were watching, we thought that if you were playing against anybody else, uh, you really could have had a chance. You were playing extremely well uh, throughout this match. It's just that Jakuzam was such a power player, honestly, and did uh, better than I think any of us expected. So, yeah, kudos to her. you. You did great. Unfortunately, not quite enough, but, you know, you get a little bit of freedom now. Um, I... I do want to remind you, by the way, feel free to hit me up for uh, some of the prizes that I can get those over for you when you want. Uh, other than that, we do need some final words for your headstone. Hang on, let me put on my best Skeletor voice. He-Man! He-Man! Why don't you suck my bone, He-Man? Oh, wow. Okay. That can we put sorry. that in a quote? <laughs> Maybe. Please do. I don't know. <laughs> Please do. Well, that was pretty good. Okay, uh, I, I think that it is that time. Uh, I'm sort of starving over here, but we will have a little bit more Kusa Grande tomorrow. Let me let me see. I, I, I believe if you want to check out the schedule, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I want to raid somebody. Ah, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. Remember, though... Daylight Savings is going to mess everything up, so we will be... Oh, that's this week? That's, yeah, it's tonight. Ah, oh, crud. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah, sure thing. So it'll probably be an hour after due to the extra hour that we're gaining. For all of those in Europe, just know that's how it's going to be. So let's go ahead. I think, who should we raid? I'm trying to find somebody who's 
playing crappy games. I'll just see who out of the people I'm following we should raid. You know what? Not my suggestion. Whatever. Big John. Big John's a good guy. Let's go bother him. Alrighty, yeah. I like Big John. He's an awesome dude. Justin, why are you attacking me with a receipt? It's so long. <laughs> it's so long. He's not um, even... He's sitting like 10 feet away from me. He stopped at a CBS and he wants you to know. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, let us go. Do we have a good raid message, by the way? Please make it suck my bone, He-Man. Or we could just go, yeah, I, I feel like that's a little bit crude for my, uh, for my All end. Alright, fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm going to go ahead and do this. Go ahead and yeah at Big John. You may put as many A's as you want in there as you would like. Take care, Adam and Artvile, and thank you, Trisden, for choosing this game. Thank you yep, for having me. Fun. Bye. Catch you later, y'all. <laughs>